Let's turn to the book of Revelation chapter 20. The book of Revelation chapter 20. I'm going to read to you five verses and then we'll pray and sit down. In the book of Revelation chapter 20. Everybody finding it okay? Last book in, in the New Testament. We'll begin reading in verse 10. And welcome to all those who have uh, just now joined us. Uh, we pray that you'll... Uh, uh, be blessed by your uh, by being with us today and studying with us today. In the book of Revelation, chapter twenty, verse ten, it says this: "And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, because they've been thrown in there just a little bit earlier, and shall be tormented night and day, or day and night, forever and ever." And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was found no, more, found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written into, in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and, the, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. Now, let me just stop here. They're not being judged whether or not they get to go to heaven or not. Because heaven, the entry into heaven, is already passed. Their judgment is the determination on what kind of judgment they're going to be living with, okay? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, Father, I know sometimes these are hard words that we, that we see here today, but Lord, they are vital words for our understanding of our need for Jesus Christ, our Savior. And that salvation will only be found through Him, for He is the door. I pray that we will not close our ears to what's being said, but Lord, that we'll keep them open, we'll judge Your Word and Your truth. And then we'll take a good hard look at our life and make sure we're where, you, where we need to be for you. We love you so much. I pray de the devil be defeated in this hour, and your name lifted up on high. In Jesus' name, amen. Without a doubt, these scriptures are some of the most exciting scriptures in the Bible. The title of my message is The Final Undoing of the Power of Sin. The last enemy of mankind is justly dealt with. I don't think any of us have a problem understanding that it is sin and its percussions that it has. The unsaved world is on a uh, collision course with Almighty God. And don't think that God has taken anything lightly. He has never taken anything lightly. When it comes to sin, He deals with it in our personal life, but also in the life of the world in general. The real heartache is simply this. There is less true gospel being preached than ever before. And I'm speaking of in our generations, in our time periods, when the gospel started being preached, when Jesus started preaching the gospel, His death, His burial, and His resurrection. When Jesus and, and literally John the Baptist, who was that transitional prophet, that he, he preached the same message, repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The world has more people in it. With more people in it, there are more people 
now facing eternity without a Christless uh, uh, God in it. Traditional religion is a failure. Now, listen to the word traditional. Many, many religions say, well, tradition says, and we believe tradition says. Tradition will not get you to heaven. Jesus gets you to heaven. So, uh, traditional religion is a failure. It's not meeting the emotional need nor the physical need, let alone the spiritual need of mankind. Because Jesus is the only one who can uh, meet those special needs. We need, we need to forget the traditions of men. It's junk. We need to return back to the Bible and accept God's eternal truth about salvation. This idea that there are many ways to heaven is a lie from Satan himself. Truth comes from Christ, and Christ Jesus said He was the only way to heaven. So who are these individuals that we read in our text this morning about that standing before the great white throne of God, which is Jesus Christ? Because all power and judgment was given into Jesus' hands. Number one, they are those who are separated from God by sin. Now, the Bible declares that every man is a sinner. Every person is a sinner. You say, well, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not that bad of a person, but yet you're bad enough to be a sinner. That's just the way it is. David said in sin he was conceived. Not that his mom did it and dad did anything wrong. It's just that is the inherited nature that we have, is the inherited nature of sin. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 10, For as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Written where? Written in the holy writs of God's Word. The Bible teaches us from the beginning back to the very end that we are all sinners in need of a Savior. That's why people need to be saved today. In the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23, he explains it in a more plain fashion. For all have sin. All of us have sin. And because of that sin, we've come short of heaven. You say, how short? It doesn't make any difference. Short is short. There is no entrance into heaven. For those who say, well, I'm a good person, so I almost made it. And those who say, well, I'm a horrible person, I didn't get any close. It doesn't make any difference. Both fall short of heaven. Okay? I just want to be perfectly clear about that. Man is not separated uh, from God by sins. That is not true. I see people uh, 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 do something bad and their friends will say, uh, well... That won't get, you won't get into heaven because of that or because of this. Oh, that person's a ruffian. They'll not get to heaven because they're a ruffian. No, that's not the truth. That person's an alcoholic. They're not going to get to go to heaven because of their alcohol. That is not true. That person is a drug uh, 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 addict, and they're not going to go to heaven because of that addiction. That is a lie. That person's a liar, therefore he's not going to get to go to heaven. That's a lie. Sins don't keep us from heaven. Now, they can be attributes. They can be attributes in, in the process of us not going to heaven. But the only sin that keeps us from heaven is the sin of unbelief. In the book of John, chapter 3, Verse 18, the Bible says this, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's what keeps us from heaven, the sin of unbelief. 
You say, well, preacher, there you go. I believe. Or do you believe? Or do you believe? What is your belief? You know the unclean spirits believe in God. The fallen angels believe in God. Satan believes in God, yet they're not going to heaven. So what is your belief? I talk to everybody. Do you believe in God? Yes, I believe in God. Okay. What have you done with that belief? What have you done? Because if you believe in something or someone, you're going to do what they say to do. Amen? The Bible says this. That he that believeth not is condemned already. Well, you say at the great white throne judgment, these folks are going to be condemned. No, they are condemned already. We need uh, someone to come in and ransom us from that. And Jesus is the one. Sins, and again, let me make this perfectly clear. I'm not saying sins are okay. All unrighteousness is sin and frowned upon by God. But sins may divert a man from the truth or mankind, but the sin of unbelief condemns him to hell and the lake of fire. Those who ignore the call of, of Christ is another one that we know that this scripture, our text, is talking about. In the book of Isaiah, uh, uh, God makes a plea with mankind. And you can turn to it. And Well, let's just turn to it real quick. The book of Isaiah chapter 1. And the Bible says in verse 18, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat of the good, uh, the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall not, uh, ye shall be devoured with, uh, with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. People always say, well, I want to negotiate with God. Well, negotiate this. Jesus is the only way to heaven, and if you don't, Go through Jesus Christ, you will not be in heaven. Come now, let us reason together. God's wisdom teaches us that sin is against God. But He has a remedy, a cure for sin, and that's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Only through the blood of Jesus Christ do we have atonement for our sin condition that we have. Now, I don't understand why mankind wants to uh, do it their way more than uh, doing it God's way. I don't understand that. I don't understand that because I understand man's way is not going to get us into heaven. God's way is the only way. You say, preacher, this is old preaching. I want to tell you something. As we said last week, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's, God's truths don't change. So those who accepted Christ thousands of years ago and are in heaven, God still does the same things today. And if so, He tarries another thousands of years. His salvation is going to be the same so we all enter into the same place, his, his abode. God doesn't change. You know, mankind, they anchor their hope and trust in the world. My friend, this world is a huge letdown. Our nation, our nation, as much as our love, our nation, our nation is a huge letdown this year. All those things were swept underneath the rug and underneath the bed and head in the corners. They got cleaned out and they came out. And it heart sickened me. 
And I don't care what affiliation you're with, both sides are in terrible condition. Because I'm not going to get political, but I'm telling you what, we're hurting for certain because God is not in control. You cannot anchor your eternal existence in this world, nor its possessions. Listen to these words from Luke chapter 12. He says, take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possesseth. Your life is not going to determine as far as the old saying, he who dies with the most toys wins. That's not true. This story, what prefaces this story is, a man came to Jesus and said, would you tell my brother to share the inheritance? He says, do I look like a judge or divider? He's reminding that young man, possessions, They flee away. Possessions. They go back to garage sales at a a sixteenth of what you paid for them. Amen? You die and everything that you deem very important, your kids don't. So they have what's called an estate sale. Where people go and buy them and then try to resell them online. Am I lying? Possessions are not what you anchor your life to. You don't anchor your life to the world's philosophy. The world's philosophy is eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we might die. Yeah, probably. But where are you going to spend eternity? Their philosophy... Say, well, these people don't even believe in God. That's o- that's not okay, but that's okay. One day they'll believe in God. They'll bow their knee before God and say, you are God. But it's too late. Some people believe that uh, uh, water is going to get you to heaven. Water doesn't get you to heaven. The blood of Jesus Christ. Some people believe good works get you to heaven. Good works will not get you to heaven, but people that are saved ought to do good works. Church affiliation. Some people believe church affiliation will get you to heaven. That will not get you to heaven. Is are you affiliated with Jesus Christ is the question. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs 16, chapter 16, verse 50. There is a way that seemeth right unto man. Oh, there are ways that we look at and say, well, that's got to be right. That's got to be right. There are ways that seemeth right unto man. But the end thereof are the ways of what? Death. What death? Physical death? No, spiritual death. Eternal separation from God. As we read into the book of Revelation, when he said the second death. The separation from God Almighty. For some reason, folks think that they're good enough. But our Bible and God's Word, His Word says this about us and those who say, I'm not all bad. In the book of Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6, But we are all as unclean things. And all our righteousness, or those, those parts in us that we believe are holy and righteous, are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as the leaf and our iniquities, which is a good name for sin, like the wind, have taken us away. You see, we must realize Christ is the only solution for sin. If you think you have another solution... Besides Christ Jesus, my friends, you've missed it. Completely, you've missed it.
Christ desires you to be His. Christ desires you to come unto Him. God Almighty who sent Jesus to this earth not to set up His kingdom, but to die on the cross, keep an appointment on a place called Golgotha, be suspended between heaven and earth. God wants you to be His child. This is why in the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 30, when he makes that plea, come unto me, I will give you rest. Now it says a whole lot more, but I'm telling you, he said, come unto me. You say, I don't want to hear it. It doesn't make any difference. God doesn't care about me. He cares about you very much. God won't save me. Oh, he'll save you. But you got to be willing. It'd be like somebody that's, that is uh, 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 some tragic in their life has happened. And there's someone there to rescue them. And they say, do you want to be, be rescued? Yes. Well, reach out your hand, but I don't want you to rescue me. That's just dumb as a box of rocks. I mean, that's just, that's just plain. They live in St. Upid. For you parents that get after the preacher for saying that other word. What is it that I'm not supposed to say? What was it? Stupid. Oh, okay. I didn't. They did. So you're from St. Upid. That's ridiculous. So silly. He wants us. He wants you. They ignore or pay little attention to Christ's words or His invitation. What an invitation from the God of the universe. Oh, what an invitation. You know, mankind will never know a more complete and satisfying solution for sin. I was watching a television newscast. And they were complaining about the, the conditions at the jail. They've got holes in it. Well, the prisoners keep knocking holes in it. And they interviewed this gentleman. And he was complaining. There's only, how many saw this? There's only two beds in each pod. And there's three of us in there and I have to sleep on the floor. What is the solution to that? Don't break the law. Don't get in trouble and fly right and you won't be in there. You'll be at home in a comfortable bed. It's not hard, people. That makes sense to me. Well, the condi I don't like the conditions in jail. Well, don't go. You go. He's our jail preacher. People say, I don't want to die and go to hell. Don't. Get saved. It doesn't cost you a dollar. It costs Jesus his life. You don't work for it. Jesus did the work on the cross. It is a gift because Jesus gave it to us. It's eternal life. It's not that hard. Those who reject Christ die or depart in their sin. They die or depart in their sin. Book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 21, uh, 27 as it is appointed unto man, wants to die. When I was a little boy, 
I would listen to the preacher. I wouldn't follow along in the Bible, but I'd listen to the preacher. And I was a Christian. I was saved. And it said this, It is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. And I didn't hear the word once. Because once sounds like other words. Like what? Once. See, it sounds the same. You don't even know what I'm talking about yet. O-N-C-E sounds like W-A-N-T-S. And I thought to myself, I was a little kid, I don't want to die. But if Jesus says I do, okay, I'll die. You know, I want to die. What was he saying? Every one of us is going to die one. We're going to leave this this flesh, amen. It's going to be. It's going to. We're going to leave this place, and not everybody's going to be old when they leave this place. Young people, little babies, teenagers, young married, middle aged. I used to be there once. The elderly, we're all going to die. But after we die, folks, there's a judgment. Not whether you're going to get to go to heaven or end up in the pits of hell. No, that's decided while you're alive. You make that decision. The uncertainty of death is frightening enough, but to die without Christ seems to be unthinkable. Remember when I got married eons ago? I'd go around asking people, okay, I'm getting married. What's it like? You go see some people and say, oh, it's, it's heaven. Other people say it wasn't. <laughs> oh, you're going to love your time together. Others say, well, you won't. Well, I tell you what, God gave me a good wife and I've had a good life. Amen. You can say amen for me because I do. You all know Cheryl with an S. We're getting ready to buy our, our home, our first home. <laughs> We've only bought one home. It's our starter home. It's going to be our finisher home too. I was scared to death, went around people, asked them, what do I expect? What do I need to do? How much money do I need? Tell you what, how much money did I need was far less than what they told me. I mean, far more than what they told me. I had way too less. Never bought a car before in my life, a brand new car, until about five years ago. A little bit nervous about that. Had to take both of my boys because both of them have bought about four of them. So they sat down with mom and pops as we went through the, through the deal. Tell me what it's like to die. You don't know. Tom, would you tell me what it's like to die? Greg, you always got something to say. Tell me what it's like to die. Anybody? I want to tell you something. It's terrible to die without Jesus in your heart. My Bible tells me in the book of Psalms 23... Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. That is a Christian man saying that. And in hell he lifted us up his eyes, being in torment. Saying to Abraham, Father, send Lazarus over that he may dip the tip of his finger in, 
in the cup of water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this pl- in this flame. Luke chapter 16. I don't know what it's like to die, but I've heard the testimony of someone who tells me death is as a shadow. Shadows can't hurt you. I hear the testimony of another being in torment, begging for mercy, but can find none. My friends, it's time to accept Jesus Christ. People don't want to think about death, but it's still a reality. I believe we need to remember this if we remember nothing about death except for this. Death is no respecter of persons. And as you stand before God, you will not give answer for what you hope or you believed what was right. You will not give answer for those things that you were sincere about because you were sincerely wrong. You'll give answer to God for that testimony of the light that was sent through His eternal words. In closing, in John chapter 5, verse 39 and 40, search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. But here's the thought process of mankind. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Do not be that person. Come to Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the doorway of heaven, the sacrifice that poured out His blood on Calvary. He didn't spill it. That's an accident. He poured it out on Calvary so you and I can have life eternal. God loves you. He wants to save you. Let Him come into your heart. As we stand with our head bowed and our eyes closed, no one looking around. Our Lord, our God.